Yeah, let's hit this one. Whoop. Sure, I can talk about Commander Shepard. Big topic. There's been a lot written about the Commander, but most of it isn't true. Hey. People are quick to judge. They don't know the whole story. I don't even know the whole story. But I know the man. Worked with him. Fought with him. Trust him with my life. Shepard's had some rough patches. Who of us hasn't? He's been forced to fight a lot of battles alone. God only knows how he got out of some of that. Makes your head spin. Thing is... You never heard a complaint. Never once got, no sir, I can't do that. He never hesitated. Few people know what Shepard's been through. I'd like to think I come pretty close. And I worry sometimes he forgets. There's a whole bunch of people who lose sleep over him getting back home. Maybe it doesn't need to be said. Maybe we're too dumb to say it. Soldiers like the Commander... ...are rare. Men like Shepard... ...even more rare. I've got... I've got a smug face right now, and I don't even know why. It's not like... It's not like most of the things he's talking about for this Shepard are... ...are even relevant to how I've played him. This is the history of Shepard since before we've ever actually controlled him. So, I don't really have a right to be smug right now, but... I am. I don't know. I'm proud of my Shepard. Just leave me be. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not doing much exploring while I'm listening to these, it's because if I get too far away, at least as I remember, if you get too far away, you, um, you actually can't hear it anymore and it automatically switches off. So, I'm staying in the area. I'll have a quick look around, um, while we listen to what Anderson has to say. Okay. I have your new questions here. As a leader, do I ever feel that the end justify the means? Spirit of law over word of law. I'm not going to touch that with a ten-foot pole, but I think I know what you're after. You're referring to the way I, um, arranged to have the Normandy released to Commander Shepard before the Battle of the Citadel. I'm not sure how valuable hindsight is to the military. Obviously, it worked out for the best. Without the Normandy and Commander Shepard free to do what they needed to do, what we needed them to do, Saren might have taken the Citadel. I think it's clear what a different galaxy this would be if that had happened. I did what I had to. If I had been wrong, I would have gladly accepted the repercussions. The real trick is... ...never being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for more action and less philosophy in these notes, let me know. And I guess, actually, I've just realized it's a biography, it's not an autobiography, so he is actually being interviewed. Um, rather than him... ...kind of wanting to do his own biography and getting some help, like I initially suggested. Um... Huh, I guess we don't need to ask him about that later. Although, it would be fun to still discuss these things with him. Maybe joke around with him. I don't- I wouldn't say ridicule, but... Jest. Jest, I think, is a good word. Uh, I'm just... I wanna work my way back down to that little study area. Before... Before wrapping up with all of these. So I'm kind of trying to strategically go around the house. Picking all of the ones on the way, and then finishing in that little study. Um, where the poker table was? Was that where the poker table was? It's where a desk is and where they're blinking lights on a computer. You asked me to talk about the SSV Normandy. The Normandy SR-1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. Acting CEO, Eli Zander, was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, and his team of Torian engineers were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Xander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the IES well past what Tatum was comfortable with. I tried to calm the situation. But it still ended with the Turian scientist in shackles and a human Turian fistfight at Cora's den later. Funny now, when I first laid eyes on the Normandy, she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Day after that training run, Admiral Wright found me on the bridge. She's yours, he said. Can't trust her to Xander. 
Send me a list of crew from the Tokyo you'd like, and prep for your first mission. Short command, thanks to Saren. Still, one of the highlights of a long career. Wow, I've forgotten that that skeleton run was the first time we went out with the Normandy, and he'd only just started captaining the ship. I feel bad for him. That's an amazing ship. It really was. And he got to captain it for for one mission. And it was kind of more like half a mission, if we're brutally honest. Oh, that kind of sucks. I'm sorry. I mean, it's not our fault, but I'm still sorry. The Turians. I wish I could sit down. Mm, well, I might not always see eye to eye with the politics and the individual. But I have a great respect for the Turian military. Any Alliance soldier lucky enough to take part in their training programs will certainly be better for it. Their precision, skill, and discipline come together in a way that's second to none. Not that I'm faulting our own people or training. It's just that after fighting Torians in the first contact war, years later, I had the opportunity to observe and train on Palavan. It was a turning point for me. And I would encourage any soldier to try it. It's a unique experience to put yourself in the squad of a Turian commander. My commander was an uncompromising bastard named Bartox Oryx. If you can find him, just ask how the platoon I commanded was trounced in his strategy game. Humbly. But I've used what I learned that day many times. The xenophobes will have their say. But I think it's vital that we do more of this kind of cross-species training. There you go. <laughs> And if you do find General Oryx, let me know. I owe him money. <laughs> well, it's honest of you to say that. I wonder how many of these clippings, these audio clippings, actually make it into the biography. It'd be interesting if it was an, an audio biography as well. With, with kind of a commentator kind of going over the highlights and then a few interview points actually from... The horse's mouth, so to speak. That's kind of an audio biography I would love to hear. I love hearing things actually told by the person. You, you don't really get that that often. O obviously, you get autobiographies, but it's not the same thing to hear those words. And that's the kind of that's the kind of content I prefer. I much prefer to hear than than read. Obviously, I prefer to see than hear. And you get my point. <clears throat> okay, so. Tombstone data. Admiral David Edward Anderson. Not sure why anybody would be interested, but thanks for asking. Um, I was born in London, June 8th, 2137. The last of three children born to Ursula and Paul. A nurse and a flight mechanic, respectively. But that's a little dry. And someone's gonna spice this up, right? <laughs> Never been much for the spotlight. Anyway, where was I? It was a second marriage for my parents. They were almost 50 by the time they had me. My mother worked shifts, so my father would often take me to the base. While he worked, I would transport ships and fighters take off. Worked his whole life around space travel, my father. But he never left Earth. Not for a day. That's he curious. Was a good man. But that's just a side note. Don't put that in. Who is it, Kaylee? Oh, yes, I need to take that. I hope this is what you're after. I'll get to the more interesting N7 stuff next time. Oh, so you and Kaylee were living together already, were you? I mean, he, he said that Kaylee and him were wanting to settle down here. But you were actually living here together. Oh, actually, maybe not. Maybe she was just staying over a few times. Hmm... Stuff to ponder. Anyway, welcome to the bedroom. Of course, naturally fitted with an armor locker and a workbench. As as is customary with all- Ooh, hot tub. I'd forgotten about this. Um, there are no audio logs here. Really? In the bedroom? They're scattered all over the house. But they're not in the main bedroom. They're in the guest bedroom, not the main bedroom. That doesn't make that much sense. Uh, stereo control. Nah, we're all good. And we've got one final audio log, if I remember correctly. Oh, that, now that's what we want to see, right there. Lots of books. Lots and lots of books. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with the books near the fire, but 
Oh, there it is. There's the last one. No, no, it's fine. I got a few minutes. First contact war? Yeah. I was there. My first real combat. First for a lot of us. I remember one night early in the war. Strapped to my seat as our transport approached the LZ. Everyone was dead silent. Just the sound of breathing. Good men. I trained with all of them. We were always joking and horsing around, but not this time. Just the rattle of the shuttle. And that heavy breathing. Everyone was thinking the same thing. We're off to fight alien invaders. Aliens. Think about that. We all grew up wondering what was out there. If we were alone in the universe. Now we knew. We weren't alone. And we were in trouble. So there we were. About to face an enemy as different and unknown as we could imagine. I knew I had to say something. Keep the men relaxed. So I turned to the soldier beside me, Hendrix, I think, and asked him how his mother was doing. Fine, he said. Why? Because I heard your mama so ugly the Marines thought she was a Torian. Almost shot her. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few smiles. Then Hendrix turned to me and said, Hell, Anderson, I heard it was a picture of your mama that started this goddamn war in the first place. <laughs> Scared the Torian shitless. <laughs> I had a good laugh at that. And the boys fought great that night. Sometimes that's all it takes. A joke, a pat on the back. Just a little reminder that everything's gonna be okay. Oh, that's fantastic. I love the camaraderie. Also, I mean, of course I don't really enjoy the idea of these guys riding out to war, risking their lives. And of course, I don't enjoy them, the idea of them killing Turians and Turians killing them, but... Still. The camaraderie. The camaraderie is always nice. I enjoy it. Catalog, that's for changing our home, if we so choose, but we first need to purchase a few things before we can do that. Um, you guys have heard enough talking for now, so let's see if we can get some action going on, right? Dinner at Sushi Place on me. Hey, Shepard. I got a few things I wanted to go over with you. With the Normandy and Dry Dock, I figured we could meet up at the Ryusei Sushi Place down in the wards. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. I hear it's the best. Joker! All right, sounds good to me, Joker. Um, you are paying, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I wonder who actually makes the most out of the both of us, considering I've, considering all of the predicaments Shepard's got him, gotten himself into. He's um, what is he? He's died, so he was no longer in the Alliance for a certain amount of time, and then he was working with Cerberus. Yeah, I mean. Who was earning the most between him and me and Cerberus? I'd say me, most likely, because I'm Shepard. No offense, Joker. And then finally... Hmm. I was discharged from the from the military, so... I guess, uh... Joker would have been earning more. I'm technically reinstatement, and reinstated, but... Is there really a payment system anymore? Shepard should have dressed up a bit. I mean, look at this line. People are dressed up really ah, nice. Commander Shepard, and we're just walking in ready. with a leather jacket. Skipping straight to the front of the line, apparently. I wonder if we can pick up some juicy dialogue or something like that. Some rumors about what's going on in the galaxy. Considering we've been cooped up on the ship the entire time, there are fish in the floor. I need this in my life. I need this in my life. It's a little morbid being a sushi place considering you kind of question which of these fish you're eating but at the same time imagine this in an aquarium not maybe not just an aquarium I mean you have those tunnels in a lot of aquariums and you have places where you can kind of spiral down a giant aquarium but I'm sorry I'm just in awe by this this is really cool and I, I just really want one um no dialogue though yeah? Good evening. Would the gentleman care for a drink? Maybe later. I'm meeting a friend. Very interesting. Good. Enjoy your evening. I knew about this place before. A French guy serving uh, drinks at a sushi place. It's all about diversity. It's the future, after all. I wonder if this is one of those sushi fusion places. 
Also, hang on. This is a sushi bar. Where are the conveyor belts of sushi? I know this is a fancy place, but come on. Sushi bar, conveyor belt, sushi. It, it needs to happen, guys. All the fancy floors, walls, and ceilings comboed will not make up for the lack of a, of a carousel with sushi on it. Hey, Shepard, not bad, huh? The sushi place is serious, like French guy at the door serious. Only had to save the galaxy twice to get a table here. You seen the line outside? <laughs> but here I am, drink in hand. Best pilot in the universe and a rock star. Damn straight, Joker. Any news from the Normandy? Ah, oh, you know, maintenance stuff. It's hard knowing a bunch of strangers are poking around in my ship. I, I mean, your ship. Our ship, Joker. It's our ship. It's, it's everybody's ship on the crew, strictly speaking. Not, not everybody's ship, you know, in regards to everyone on the Citadel. The best thing we can do right now is Parker and let the techs do their work. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Maybe an oil change, space tire rotation. Right. Trust me, it'll do her some good. Oh, I trust you. Not sure about those shifty aerospace engineers. Always stealing the silverware. <laughs> we don't have silverware, Joker. Okay, maybe they're going to rip up your nice leather seats and then replace it with some, I don't know, plastic, maybe? Let someone else do the work for once. Hackett's orders. You're on shore leave. Yeah, whether we like it or not. I'm sure you'll manage. I may need a drink that comes with an umbrella. I'm the first human specter. I'll get you two umbrellas. Awesome use of power, boss. So, your email said it was important? My email? I'm here because I got a message from you. The hell? I, I didn't send anything. Hit the deck. Hit the deck. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Commander! Get down. Excuse me. Sorry. Lion's business. Commander, this is urgent. I don't think that's the umbrella lady. Commander Shepard, I'm Staff Analyst Maya Brooks. Alliance, excuse me, Alliance Intelligence. There are people trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I think he's aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean Cerberus and the Reapers. I mean other people, new people. They're, it's, <sighs> someone is hacking your account. Com channels, personal records. They're targeting you specifically. So it is a trap. Targeting me? What do they want? The intel isn't definitive yet. Last time, I guess without definitive intel, we almost landed troops on a gas giant, which is bad. Hang on, Brooks. Take a breath. <sighs> From the top, what do you know? Excuse me, you don't have a reservation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's performance is brought to you by Random Acts of Violence. That actually sounds like a punk band. I'm pretty sure that is a punk band, now that I think of it. Man, I love show business. Spread out, boys. Find me Shepard. Shepard, what are the chances you brought a gun with you? I mean, I know you're coming to dinner, but Stay there. what are I'll the chances? Come. Joker! Ow, my pancreas. Oh, I forgot he was fragile. Hey! Damn it! Got one, sir! Find the crew. I'm going after her. Find the crew. Got it. 